Welcome everybody to your weekly dose of abstract algebra in our friendly introduction to abstract algebra. Well, this week's lesson is not going to be so friendly because I assume that you have some knowledge of uh, matrices or even a little bit background in linear algebra. If not, if you have never heard about matrices before, I think it's uh, best if you skip this week entirely. You will not miss much for the future. We will sometimes use matrices, but not that often. And of course, I can give you a crash course on linear algebra here in this uh, short video. Okay, for those who have heard about matrices before, what are we going to do in this week's video? Remember, we started with symmetries of a triangle. Then we saw that those can be represented as permutations on the vertices. And this week we are learning that we can associate any symmetry with a matrix in a vector space, namely R2, the Euclidean vector space of the plane. And I will tell you or remind you how to associate to a linear transformation of such a vector space a matrix, how we end up with the columns. And then we will see that using matrix product as a composition, this set of six matrices in this case actually turns out to be a group. All right, let's dive into the details. Okay, so what are we doing exactly? So far we have considered a symmetry to be a movement of this triangle that cannot be detected. For example, this here. Now we are putting this equilateral triangle inside of a vector space, namely the Euclidean vector space R2. So we take these two axes and now we consider a symmetry to be a linear transformation, which then gives me a symmetry of this vector space, if you wish, which correlates to this triangle. Usually we take the canonical basis, like here, this basis vector and this orthogonal and of length one. This time we take a different approach. We adapt the basis to our triangle, to the symmetry of, of our triangle. We take this here as our first basis vector and this here as our second. Then this is clearly also a basis of R2 because those two vectors are clearly linearly independent and two linearly independent vectors in R2 uh, span R2, so they are a basis. All right, so this is what we have here. B, script B, is the basis consisting of these two um, vectors. And this time I label the vertices like that, one, two, three, because I want this vector to be called E1 and this here E2. That doesn't really matter, but just to avoid confusion, usually we started uh, with the label one here, but this is not important. Okay, so now what happens if I apply the symmetry that we called R1? so far, which is rotating the triangle by 120 degrees. Well, this vector here gets mapped to the second basis vector, which is very good because it gives me a simple matrix. And this vector here goes to this vector. And now all we have to do is to write down what this linear transformation does to the basis vectors find the coordinate representation in this basis again, and then we already have the columns of the matrix. So let's do that. So R1 applied to E1 simply gives me E2, and now I express E2 again in this basis. E2 is zero times E1 plus one times E2. And then those two numbers are exactly the entries of the first column of the matrix, which I call capital R1. So we have here a zero and a one. Now, for this vector here, we have to make the following observation. If you add these two vectors by the parallelogram rule, well, this is not 
perfectly symmetric but close enough. So you take this vector here and put it here and then the endpoint of this vector gives me the endpoint of the sum of those two. So here is E1 plus E2. And then for symmetry reasons, this vector here is nothing but the negative vector of this one. This is the important observation here. So if I take the negative vector of this one, I exactly end up with this vector here that I'm looking for. So this here is nothing but negative E1 plus E2. So this gives me the following basis representation of this image vector here. It is minus 1 times E1 minus 1 times E2. So the second column of my matrix is minus 1 minus 1 and that's it. So I have found a new object that I can associate with this symmetry which was some kind of movement of a triangle. Last week we learned about how to associate a permutation to this symmetry. Now it's a matrix. Okay, let's do one more. For example, we take the reflection about this axis here, the symmetry axis that goes through vertex 1. And again, if you're wondering why I take uh, the letter S, R for rotation and reflection are the same in English. This here comes from the German Spiegelung, which starts with an S. So, what happens to basis vector E1 if I reflect about this axis? Well, of course, nothing. It stays invariant. So we have 1, 0 because the image of E1 under small s1 is E1 itself, which is 1 times E1 plus 0 times E2. So this is the first column. What happens to this vector here? Well, if I reflect about this axis, it exactly gives me here like here, this vector that we have found before, which is nothing but the negative of E1 plus E2. So this would be the matrix associated to the symmetry that is reflecting about this symmetry axis here. And now I think you're able to find all the other matrices that correspond uh, to the other symmetries uh, on your own. This is actually the first part of the first exercise of this week's uh, problem set. So I'm not going into any more detail here. Okay, if you do this, you will end up with six matrices. And the set of these matrices I denote by D3 and here mat for matrix. And so we have a set with six matrices. Now we want to make a group out of this set. Well, if you heard anything about matrices before, you know that you can multiply them using the matrix product. So we take the matrix product as composition on this set here. For example, I can then calculate R1, which we found here, squared, which is defined as the product of R1 with itself. Let's do this. Okay, here's just a quick reminder um, how to do that. So to find the first entry of this product here, you take this column, you rotate it by 90 degrees and imagine that it hovers above the, this matrix here and then you multiply this guy with this guy and those two and you add the products. So this will give you zero times zero plus one times minus one. Now for this entry you do the same but with this row and the second row here. So you multiply zero times one plus one times minus one. And then the same for those two entries here. You take this column, rotate it, Imagine that it hovers above the first matrix and then again you multiply. So you have minus 1 times 0 plus minus 1 times minus 1. And the last entry of this product matrix 
is minus one times one plus minus one times minus one. And this gives me here minus one, here minus one, here one, and here minus one plus one, zero. Now the big question is, is this set of matrices here actually closed under this composition, meaning matrix product? If not, then this would not be an operation on this set because it would lead me outside of this set and we would have no chance that this becomes a group. But this here is actually the matrix that corresponds to the rotation by 240 degrees. Why? Well, if I rotate here the triangle by 240 degrees, this vector gets mapped to this vector. And we already know that this here is minus E1 plus E2, parentheses, or this. So this here is the first column. And this vector, if I rotate it by 240 degrees, ends up here on vector E1. So this is simply E1, meaning this here is the second column. So this is actually, again, an element of this set here. If you have the geometric picture in the back of your mind, then this is obvious because I apply two times the symmetry of a triangle, which gives me again a symmetry. But here in this setup, we want to focus on the matrices and forget at least a bit about the geometric background. So you actually would have to check that if you take all these products here, you always end up with an element of this set here. The details, as I've said before, are left for problem set number three. And of course, you do not have to compute all the matrix products because that is pretty tedious and you don't really learn anything by it. But if you're new to linear algebra and haven't worked with matrices so much before, then I think computing here two or three matrix products is a nice exercise. So, and what happens if I take the third power of R1, this is defined as this guy here, the square of R1 times R1 times itself. Well, what we expect is that we get the identity because we have rotated by 360 degrees and actually If you do the calculation, you end up with this matrix, which is nothing but the matrix of the identical transformation. This means we have found an inverse of this element here, namely this guy here, R1 squared or simply R2. If you do not rely on the geometric background, you actually have to check that also um, the other product, um, R1 times R1 squared, is the identity because the group will turn out to be non-commutative. Actually, here, when you multiply the powers, this is not important because here the order is obviously not important if I take the square here or take the square here. So. This actually suffices to show that the inverse matrix of this matrix here is again a matrix in the set, namely R2. Or if you know about the formula for the inverse matrix of a 2 by 2 matrix, you can apply this directly and you will end up with the same result that the inverse matrix of this one here is exactly that matrix. Okay, and since the details or the rest of the calculations is left to the exercises, this is all for today. To summarize, this set of matrices here that come from a geometrical background form a group under matrix multiplication as composition. And this will turn out to be a non-commutative group, which is not so surprising if you think about the origin. And later we will use this notation, this is actually isomorphic to our dihedral group of the equilateral triangle, which turned out to be isomorphic to the symmetric group
on three elements. So we have found three different groups which are not so different after all but they contain different objects and they all arose out of the symmetries of this simple object here, equilateral triangle. Okay, one more thing. If you did uh, last week's problem set, you have found out that the permutation version of the dihedral group here is generated by only two elements, namely the rotation by 120 degrees and any of those uh, three reflections. The same is true here. And this is written like that. This means R and S generate this group, meaning you take all the powers of R composed with all the powers of S and then you actually end up with all the elements of this group here. And this is sometimes a bit easier to work with than here those actually six different looking matrices. So we have the identity matrix, we have this matrix, then we have the square of this matrix, as, as we've seen here. Then we have a reflection, any reflection, you can take this if you want. Then we have the product of R with S, with, which gives you another reflection. And the last missing reflection is actually R squared times S. All right, that's it for this week. As always, I encourage you to do the problem set link below. If this video was helpful to you or you even enjoyed that, please give a like, subscribe and drop a comment below. Yeah, thanks for watching and hope to see you again next week. Bye bye.